Okay, I've worked out how navigation works in Godot 4. It's different, but it's actually a much better system. It calculates a path to the next point on the way towards the target dynamically, which means that if something changes, like something gets in the way, it will adjust the path to bypass the obstacle. Um, Godot 3 would return a path to a target in the form of an array of points, and if something was going to change, you needed to recalculate the whole thing again. Your uh, uh, kinematic body script in Godot 3 probably looked something similar to this. So the navigation node would return the array of path points via this uh, get simple path uh, function and you'd have a, a movement vector which would be the difference between the next path point and the current position and when you were very close to that next point you'd push the index by one until the index matched the size of the path array and all this time you'd move and slide in the direction of that vector and you'd multiply it by a speed parameter and interpolate it with uh, delta times acceleration and uh, it worked pretty well except it did seem a little hacky it was all done in GD script so it was a bit slow it's especially when you wanted to recalculate the entire path array on every frame, like when you were moving towards a moving target. Also, Godot 3 required that you build this specific hierarchy of nodes where there was this navigation node at the top and it had the navigation mesh instance node as its descendant. And then the kinematic body that used the navigation needed to be a grandchild or great grandchild of the navigation node, which is kind of limiting. Now in Godot 4, you'll see that, first of all, there's no such thing as navigation node anymore. That node is gone. There's only one node that does all this and it's called navigation region 3D and, uh, and it does the navigation thing and it also holds the nav mesh resource. And the coolest thing about it is that the character body, formerly kinematic body, can be completely detached from it. Like it doesn't have to be a descendant of it, which is extremely liberating. So here I have a simple setup for um, 3D navigation in Godot 4 and you can see here I have the character body as a child of the root and the navigation region is also a child of the root but there's no connection between them except for the tree root so let's just create a new nav mesh resource in our navigation region node and uh, let's just bake the navigation boom now in Godot 4 the character body communicates with the navigation region using a so-called navigation agent node so you just drop this navigation agent 3d node somewhere under your character body and once it's there you need to tell the agent where you wanted to move the character body. The agent has this built-in method uh, called uh, set target locations. Just put your target transform here. I just have a static uh, target 3D node here for demonstration purposes, but your target may be any 3D node and it can also be moving, no problem. The agent will compute its next step towards the target, no matter where the target happens to be, and it will only be interested in its immediate next step. That's the beauty of this approach. It's dynamic. It adjusts itself to what's going on in the scene. Uh, you don't have to rebake your navigation when an obstacle appears. Uh, it can even send a signal to inform you when the path has changed. That's pretty cool. So then you go to the agent's signals and connect the velocity computed uh, signal to a function in your character body script. And this function will be triggered each time the agent has successfully computed the velocity to the next point and it will feed that information into the motion velocity property based on where the agent is on the path towards the target and the, which you defined up here. So then just call move and slide and that's all you need to do here. And then in your physics process, you'll get the next path point from your navigation agent using this get next location method. You'll define your current position to be the character body's current global transform and you'll set a velocity parameter to be the difference between the next and current positions multiplied by a speed parameter and you will send this velocity information to the navigation agent to use for the next velocity uh, computation. That literally is it. So if I run this, uh, you can see the agent moves the character body towards the target as expected. Unfortunately, this doesn't work with grid map yet. If you set nav meshes for tiles in the mesh library and put the grid map under the navigation region, it doesn't do anything. Uh, I flagged this on GitHub. Uh, hopefully they fix it soon. It's a pretty basic functionality. One other thing I got to work in Godot 4 is my ragdoll setup, physical skeleton, I mean. Surprisingly, this wasn't difficult to port at all. Uh, all I needed to do was save my physical skeleton as a TSCN resource 
and bring it over to my Godot 4 project and uh, place it under the Skeleton 3D node. The only thing that didn't port was collision shapes. I mean, the nodes were all there in the right places, but I had to manually adjust the shapes all over again. That didn't carry over too well. Not a big deal. There is one problem though with Ragdoll in Godot 4. Clearly there's a regression bug of some sort with physical joints. They exist in Godot 4, but it's like the engine doesn't recognize them. It gives you a ton of errors, all to do with uh, mismatching joint types. So if you want to work with a physical skeleton in Godot 4, make sure to save it as a scene and keep it away from your project files and only bring it into your Godot 4 project folder when the project is already running in the editor. That way the parser doesn't have to cope with it when opening the project. Because if you open the project with your physical skeletons already in the files, chances are Godot will crash when opening the project due to the excessive amount of errors. It happened to me uh, multiple times. So I brought mine in to show you that it's working and I'm going to remove it from the project before saving it and closing Godot because otherwise I wouldn't be able to open it again. It's annoying as hell but hey, uh, pre-alpha, right? Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video covering of the ragdoll setup in Godot 4 because that was a bit tricky too. Other than that, I'm making baby steps as you can see and I'm really hoping that 2022 will be the year of Godot 4. Best of luck in the new year to all of you. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.